Hello. I have a reason to celebrate today and I'm gonna share that with you. Oh yeah, and we're also doing an abortion true or false with an OBGYN, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I have not posted videos in like two months, but I have been keeping my shorts game going. And here's what we have to celebrate. That as of this um, recording, I have 220,000 subscribers. And I think a lot of you came from a short on breach birth that I had that um, now, as of this recording, has 51 million views in like the past two weeks. That's crazy. So welcome to my new subscribers. Today we're talking about abortion. I'm just gonna, just gonna break you right in. Before I do that, if you are new here, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell so you never miss an update. Alrighty, here we go. There is so much misinformation about abortion out there. And as an OBGYN, I'm gonna break it down for you so that you know what's true and what's false. So we've got five things that you may hear, or you see online or hear in the media and social media, and you might be wondering, is that real? Or is that just somebody trying to tell me something to get me to believe what they want me to believe? And I'm here with data as always, as always, references, resources in my show notes. So before you go, that's not true. Show me your proof. It's in the show notes, so take a look. Okay, so there's one organization in particular that drives me insane. It's called Students for Life. And this is an anti-abortion organization. And I also, I do wanna say that I'm here not to convince you to like agree with abortion. I totally support you if the right choice for you is to not like abortion for you. See, choices. It's not about deciding what other people do. So I don't care if there are people out there, websites that say like, I don't believe in abortion. Love that for you. What Students for Life is though, it's an organization that is based and steeped in misinformation and a lot of lies. And we don't do that here. So these are some things that you'll see on their website that drive me crazy. Okay, number one, having an abortion hurts your ability to get pregnant in the future. Meaning like it hurts your fertility. This is so false. This is not true at all. Now you might think, well, if somebody has an unsafe abortion, like an illegal abortion where they use something very dangerous, and it causes scarring in the uterus, that that could hurt their fertility? Sure, anything that is not safely done could potentially cause issues. What we're talking about is safe, legal, well-studied abortion by providers who are trained and have the ability to use the right procedures, the right instruments. Yeah, none of that hurts your future fertility. It's a blatant lie. And you see that out there because why? They wanna use a scare tactic into making you think abortion is bad. And it's, it's, just, it's just not true, which is really weird because the second true or false that I'm <laughs> gonna talk about is the opposite, which is that, well, right after an abortion, you're super fertile. So you better watch out or you're gonna get pregnant again. It's like one is the opposite of the other. Anywho. It's not true. Your fertility and your ability to get pregnant after an abortion or after giving birth or anything related to being pregnant and then not being pregnant, it's all the same. It just goes back to baseline. So yeah, you got pregnant once, so you might be able to get pregnant again. So if you don't want to, you should talk about some form of birth control. And there are actually a lot of birth control things that we can do at the same time as an abortion. So right after an abortion, we can place an IUD, we can insert an next one on an arm implant, or we can talk about prescriptions for other medications. And if you've got questions about birth control, watch the video up there. But no, you're not like super fertile after an abortion. That just doesn't make sense. Okay, true or false? Did you hear how I just said false? I am from Long Island and I just went back into that moment. Number three, true or false? Having an abortion increases your risk of cancer. What do you think? Yeah, it's false. Now you might be confused because as you see on like the Students for Life webpage and a lot of anti-choice accounts and social media, blah, 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 they say the exact opposite. Here's the deal. The references they cite are crap references. And when we look at good studies and good data, there is no increased risk of cancer after an abortion. In fact, let's consult the data ourselves. So the Susan G. Komen organization, which I will link in the show notes below, um, says, introduction, research clearly shows abortion is not linked to an increased risk of breast cancer clearly shows put in the show notes and they talk about what they said here some case control studies have suggested abortion may increase the risk of breast cancer however the design of these studies makes the accuracy of their results questionable these kinds of studies rely on the reporting of past behavior when it comes to a sensitive subject like abortion that can have a big impact on the information gathered okay what that means is that these studies 
were people who had breast cancer and they said, hey, can you think of anything or can you tell me what you've done in the past that might have increased your risk? And we know that in these types of studies, people who've had a bad outcome, like getting breast cancer, tend to over-report or tend to give an undue weight to things that they think about in the past that might have contributed. What we really need, and when we look at good data and good studies like randomized control trials and prospective trials, there's no increased risk of breast cancer or any other kind of cancer. We need to stop it with people saying this. It's linked to so many things that have to do with our reproductive outcomes, whether it's using birth control, having an abortion. There's so much misinformation about these things cause cancer. They are carcinogens. Like these are catchphrases and usually things created by people who have no idea how to like actually understand science and read studies. So I'm here to tell you that having an abortion does not increase your risk of cancer. Totally false. Fourth, true or false. Your doctor will know if you've had an abortion. This is actually false. The only way that your doctor or any healthcare provider can know if you've had an abortion is if you tell them, if they see it in a chart, you know, that you had done in a place and the charts are connected, or if you have medication abortion pills, the mesoprostol pill in your vagina, if you go into the emergency room or your doctor's office and those pills are still there. That's why I recommend that you put them in your mouth, under your tongue or between your cheek and not place them vaginally. So there's no other way that we can know. There's no blood test for these drugs. There's nothing that we can see, which is an important thing to know if you need to seek care after an abortion and you're worried that you can get in trouble for it. You can just tell us you had a miscarriage. They look exactly the same. They're managed exactly the same. There's no need to disclose this. I hate that I have to say this. It's stupid. You should be able to share all the details of your health history, but I understand why you might feel limited in that. If you have questions about medication abortion pills, how they work, what they are, gotcha right up here. Go ahead and watch the video. The fifth and final abortion, true or false? Abortion increases your risk of depression and content warning, suicide risk, attempts at suicide. Have you, have you seen a theme here? Because the answer is yes, false. You will see on the Students for Life website, they say some ridiculous things that I'll show you here. They say that abortion risk to mental health, that new studies show people who've had abortions are 81% more likely to experience issues like suicide, regret, substance abuse, loss of self-confidence, insomnia, nightmares, relation issues, and depression. This is false. Let's talk about the Turnaway study. The Turnaway study is a really good study. It's a prospective study, the good kind that I talked about. And yes, I will link it in my show notes. And it is named for what they looked at. So people who wanted an abortion, who couldn't get it, who were turned away, how did they do afterwards? And what they found was that receiving an abortion did not cause any increased risks of issues like depression or suicidality or even other things like financial strain, but being turned away, not getting the abortion you wanted, increased the risk of those exact things and even more. So the Turnaway study showed that denying someone an abortion created economic hardship which lasted for years after their denied abortion. For four years after they couldn't get the abortion they wanted, there was an increased risk in household poverty. Years after not being able to get the abortion they wanted, these people were more likely to not have enough money to cover basic living expenses like food, housing, transportation. Things that are kind of important when you're like raising kids, right? They were more likely to report bankruptcy after being denied their abortion. Not because they were denied the abortion, but because they were then forced to continue a pregnancy and birth and like raise a kid that they were not financially prepared for. This is why it's sick and twisted to have these false and incorrect narratives out there. People turned away from getting an abortion are more likely to stay in contact with a violent partner. And then they're more likely to raise the resulting child alone. Yeah, super cool, right? More and more, even, you know, the babies that are then born who these parents were not ready to take care of, they had worse child development, they are more likely to live below the federal poverty line, and they themselves were more likely to have worse behavioral outcomes and do worse in school. So yeah, it's totally false. And in fact, the opposite thing is the truth. Okay, so to wrap it up, abortion does not hurt your future fertility. It doesn't make it harder to get pregnant in the future. And it also doesn't make it easier to get pregnant in the future. It changes none of that. It does not increase risk of cancer. Your doctor will not know if you've had an abortion. And in fact, you don't have to tell them. And it doesn't lead to depression or any other issues. Being turned away from the abortion that you wanted, that is a much more likely risk. That does much worse things for your mental health. Okay, that's it for this episode. So before I go, go ahead, let me know what you think. Read the references before you decide to comment and you say that they're not true or add other myths and stupid things that you've heard. I would love to hear about it. As always, you can follow me elsewhere on TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, where we talk about all things related to reproductive health, abortion, periods, sex, all the good things. Thanks for subscribing, following along, and I'll see you next week.